Good morning, YouTube. If you found your way to this video, I guarantee it's because you're trying to work with some torsion axles and you realize pretty quickly that there's not a whole lot of information about them online. So today, I'm gonna to go through the process of shortening a torsion axle by cutting it and welding it back together, as well as what exactly is a torsion axle. All right, so if you're still pretty new to torsion axles, then this part of the video is for you. What the hell is a torsion axle? So, this is my stock torsion axle, and as you can see, I chopped it in half to really show you what's going on inside of the housing. So to start, torsion axles are designed to last between 20 and 25 years, and that's because the suspension comes from these rubber strands, as you can see, and I'll show you closer in a minute, and after 25 years, they start to dry out and become a lot harder. All right, so here's a closer look at what's going on inside the torsion axle. This square is connected directly all the way down the axle shaft to the wheel th through this arm. Um, so when the, when the wheel hits an impact and this gets flexed up, it's gonna push into those rubber bands and in return offer suspension. So as you can imagine, once these pieces of rubber start wearing out, it's gonna be a lot stiffer for the wheel and a lot stiffer ride on the entire trailer. So with the normal V sprung axle, you could buy it basically any length, chop it down, three weld brackets on, make it fit for just about any application. And I just got doing that with a gooseneck. It's pretty straightforward. But with a torsion axle, as you can imagine, you really gotta wash your heat around those rubber strands because you melt those and the axle is junk. It's not worth it. All right, to start, I wanted to show you guys how my stock axle is mounted onto the trailer. This is what it's looking like. Now we go to our new axles. The mounting bracket on the axle is on the outside of the frame. There's, now we have this gap that's in between the frame. All right, so I got you guys propped up on my homemade little tripod, and I want to go over a few things. So when you're messing with any sort of axle, there's two main alignment angles that you need to worry about. So to put you guys in perspective, you're looking at my axle from the side right now. So this is the top of it, this is the bottom of it. And you can tell because this axle is cambered, meaning it has this bow in it. So it bows down like that. And so that bow is how you deal with camber. So when we're done welding and shortening this axle, we need to make sure the camber is just about where we started. If you mess this up, this is where you're gonna see your tires wearing really bad on the inside or really bad on the outside because it's not sitting on the road flat. The second alignment angle is your toe, and that's basically where this axle is a straight line. So both wheels are hitting the road straight on. And so if we get done and this axle is flat on this side and this side bends up a little bit, then obviously that tire is going to wear a lot faster. So that one's pretty easy to measure. Obviously I have it sitting flat on this table right now so there's no gaps under it. And you can basically use any straight edge to set on top of here and make sure that this is a straight line. The other one's a little bit more difficult to measure, but the way I like doing it is, is cambered directly in the middle. So you basically have two straight lines. It's kind of hard for you to see from that angle, but this level is sitting flush on this half of the axle, and there's a gap over here. If we flip it around, it sits flat on this half of the axle, and there's a gap over here. So that gap will help us measure the camber of the axle. So it's sitting flat all the way up until the middle of the axle, and then there's a gap over here. If we measure that gap, we have an inch and an eighth. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do that on this side as well. So sitting flat on this half of the axle, and then we measure over here, we have an inch and an eighth. And that's gonna be really important, so we just wanna make sure we know where the axle's starting. So the next thing that I really recommend doing is like I said earlier, there's rubber components in this axle shaft, and they go up to about here, but you really have no way of knowing unless you drill a little hole. So like you can see here, I have drilled a small hole in the side of the axle. And what I'm gonna do is just take a piece of wire and we're just gonna shove it down in there until we hit a wall. And that wall will be as far as we can go. So this is just good to know for when you start welding. And make a mark on the axle. And again, this does not have to be exact. All right, so now we know that we have about this much room on each side before we get to the rubber. And that's quite a bit of room, but metal can heat up very fast. So we just always have to keep that in mind that we don't wanna let the heat build up to the end of the axle. All right, so I definitely forgot to hit record while I was doing this, but I'll go ahead and go over what I did. So like I said, this hole is directly in the middle. So we have 59 and a half inches from inside bracket to inside bracket. So that would mean that we have 29 and three quarter to the direct middle of the 
axle. So as you can see, that hole is at 29 three quarter. We need to take an inch and a quarter out of this. I wanna make these axles one inch shorter exactly, but how we're gonna do it is we're gonna cut an inch and a quarter out, put an insert in, weld the insert, and then butt that up to that weld. So that weld is gonna be about a quarter, but that's why we're taking an inch and a quarter out, but only making the axle one inch shorter. So as you can see, I have 29 and an eighth to this tape line, and that's a straight line all the way around. 29 and an eighth, 29 and an eighth. back on the workbench and now this is what we're working with so if we take some calipers it's 2.2 inches on the inside so that's a pretty odd size and the odds of you finding something that fits in there perfect is slim to none unless you want to pay to have some square tubing custom made but that's just over two inches so if we take a piece of two inch square tubing you can see it slides in there real nice um, but we just have some gaps so what I'm gonna do is shim these gaps with some strips of about eighth inch sheet metal and make it fit in there snug and then we're just gonna weld that on. All right guys, so I'll show you what I made up. This is what I made. As you can see, it's a two by two piece of square tubing. And then to get a super tight fit, I weld them both together. I made a little ramp on the end to make installation just a little bit easier. And I'll show you. This is a little over six inches, about six and a quarter. So we're gonna beat that in there, just over three inches. I haven't done this yet, but I've had a really hard time beating it in. Another tip we could use is putting some heat right into the end of this axle housing, and that's gonna make that metal expand. We are at three inches, a little bit over. So as we've talked about plenty of times, at our mark, right here, is where the rubber starts. So this is what we need to make sure that we don't get that hot. So something that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wet rag, put it on top of here. And that's not going to do a whole lot, but it's going to help absorb some of the heat before it makes it all the way down there. Alright, so here we have a pretty wet rag. It's that simple. All I'm going to do is lay it over that. That can absorb a lot of the heat. And then while we're welding, I'm gonna weld one pass and then I'm gonna go feel down here and make sure that it's not getting too hot. Down where the rubber starts, if it's too hot for you to touch, it's too hot for the rubber. So what I like doing when I weld stuff like this is I like welding opposite sides as fast as possible. Because obviously if you weld this side, the piece is gonna wanna pull to that side. So if you weld this side, I like to really quickly weld the other side. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Put a tack on each corner for now to hold it and then we'll weld this side and flip it over and weld the opposite side. All right, now with that having equal pull on that piece, I'm gonna go ahead and feel the thing. And I mean, it's not even warm until about four inches from my welding spot. So I feel fairly comfortable about continuing to weld. All right, so now we got everything pushed together and clamped up. This is the most important part of the entire process. We have to check every measurement multiple times, multiple places every variable. So the first one, I need 58 and a half inches from the inside bracket to the inside bracket. That's how wide my frame is. Any shorter, it won't fit on. But that is right where I want it as far as how wide the axle is. Next up, same thing as before, we're gonna slide it all the way up and we're gonna measure the camber. So before, if you remember, we had an inch and an eighth. Right back where we were, we have about an inch and an eighth. This size perfect well. And if you guys remember, 
We also need it to be laying flat. Um, and this is gonna affect our toe. So I'm gonna get down here, and there's actually a little bit of gap right here. So I'm gonna tighten this up, see if I can push that down. All right, I'm gonna check everything again, make sure everything's perfect. I mean, even stupid things, make sure the axle is pointed the right way so both, both halves are pointed up that way. And then take note when you are looking at the stuff, I mean, if it's off a hair, we're gonna use that to our advantage. So I think that it's just a hair under an inch and an eighth on each side of my camber. So I'm gonna attack these bottom sides first because what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull the axle like that. I'm gonna go ahead and measure everything. So now it's bending up like this. I'm gonna go ahead and weld that pass. I'm gonna run just a little bit hotter because now we're really burning into that insert that we put inside of the tubes. All right, so I really burned that in. I'm gonna go ahead and try to flip this axle back to how we had it. Now we got it sitting flat again. Make sure, I mean, it's sitting flat across the table. I'm gonna measure everything again. I hope you guys get the point. You cannot check everything enough. Like, this is so crucial. All right, I am happy with it. Remember, check to make sure it's still cool. sides welded we're gonna double check I mean there's no heat down here where's our line our line is all the way down here so I mean we're we're golden like I can keep my hand that close to it so that's exactly what you want to see all right so I got everything welded grounded down I mean it looks like one continuous axle I'm gonna show you guys one more trick that I like to do and I'm just gonna drill a couple quarter inch holes off center of where we just welded the two together and that's just to put some stud welds in to make sure nothing ever comes loose with that insert that we put in. Um, so pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna go off center a little bit, and just drill a hole. And you'll be able to feel it when you really go through. I like to go just a little bit farther. It's just gonna help penetrate and fuse everything together. So right there's good. Same thing on the other side. And then, like I said, I'm just going to fill those holes up with weld. That easy. I'm going to go ahead and flip the axle over and do the same thing to all the other sides. I just want to show you guys how it looks installed on the trailer. You can see, I mean, it fits perfectly up against there. Perfectly up against there. All right, so all that's left to do is get this axle up on the table and repeat the process. Yeah.